Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. On this Veterans Day, we honor the service and sacrifice of our vets. Special commemorations are held throughout the state line. One of those events happened at a Rockford Memorial dedicated to those who didn't come home from war. An organizer explains why we should remember veterans' sacrifices every day. And details on a memorial unveiled today for the victims of the Highland Park Parade shooting. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. Americans pause today to honor the nation's military veterans. Federal, state, and city offices are closed for the day. There's no mail delivery, and most bank branches are closed. In Rockford, community members gathered at Rockford's Veterans Memorial Hall. Nikel Delgado was there. Nikel? That's right, Eric and Mimi. Veterans Memorial Hall and Museum held its annual Veterans Day celebration. The 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month represents the end of World War I. Now, the day is used to honor all veterans and their service to our nation. Most people on a day to day aren't knocking on doors or saying, hey, thank you for your service. So I think this is a day where we can go out of our way and really carry that torch. On this Veterans Day, the community came together to honor veterans. Auburn High School Junior and Color Guard Command Sergeant Major Eric Larson says it is his first time being a part of this event, but says it's an honor for him and his peers. Well, it's incredibly inspiring to see those who went before me and it feels very great to be in this position. Larson says he comes from a long line of military service. From the age of six years old, he felt a special calling to the military. He says it's an honor to be surrounded by heroes. I love hearing stories, I love hearing experiences, and there's a lot of experience to go around over here. Monique A. Dettel is regent for the Rockford chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution. She says we as a community need to do more to recognize our veterans. It's fun. I mean, this is why DAR exists. Our, our mission is patriotism, education, and historic preservation. Jonathan Logoman was keynote speaker. The Rockford Alderman and Army National Guard member tells me he is honored to celebrate with so many of his fellow brothers and sisters who have put their lives on the line. We're veterans from Desert Storm, Iraq, Afghanistan, Vietnam. So that it's really neat to see the, the generations of, of veterans that are here uh, celebrating this wonderful and patriotic day, Veterans Day. Larson says today is not about any individual person, but about the sacrifice so many freely gave. That people from our generation care, and that people in general care, and that there are people in the community who value the sacrifice and the service that was committed to our country. Veterans Memorial Hall and Museum is open to the public Tuesday through Fridays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Admission is open, is free, and donations are always welcomed. Mimi? All right, thanks, Nikel. At Midway Village, veterans and members of the community came together at the LZ Peace Memorial. The Vietnam Veterans Honor Society hosted the event. There was a short service with readings and playing of the national anthem. Several veterans shared stories of pain and pride. Those who attended say it's important to take time to honor those who serve. But the walls have the names on them. There's more than just maybe somebody but it's specifically people with a name that's a son, a daughter. Um, and today we remember not only those that serve, but especially those that died. And when you hear that song in the background, it, you are proud to be an American. Much like the Vietnam Wall in Washington, D.C., the LZ Peace Memorial honors those who served locally. Despite rain, Vice President Kamala Harris and First Lady Jill Biden honored veterans during a ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery. Harris laid a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier while Mrs. Biden looked on. President Biden is in Egypt attending a climate change conference. We'll tell you about that a little bit later in the newscast. Earlier in the day, the First Lady hosted a breakfast at the White House. She also announced new support for children who live with wounded service members and veterans. Tonight, we recognize the sacrifice of all who served in the military with a special edition of Eyewitness News. You'll hear stories from across the country and here at home. Veterans Voices Honoring Those Who Serve starts at 6 right here on WTVO 17. 
Janesville police released the findings of an investigation after a police officer's weapon was fired at a local middle school. It happened last month at Edison Middle School. According to police, the officer's backpack strap was hooked on the grip of the firearm. As the officer pulled on the shoulder strap to disengage it from the gun, the weapon went off. No one was hurt. Police determined the incident to be an unintentional, unique, and isolated incident. Highland Park has a new memorial to remember the victims of the July 4th parade shooting. The memorial's been constructed in a rose garden near City Hall. Officials wanted a quiet place where people can come and contemplate the tragedy, which took the lives of seven people. The current memorial is only temporary. The city of Highland Park is scouting for a location for a permanent site. We need to give everybody, everybody time and space as they move forward. The alleged gunman's currently behind bars facing 117 counts, including first degree murder. He has pleaded not guilty. Kevin Conroy, the voice actor best known for portraying Batman, has died after a battle with cancer. Warner Brothers confirmed the actor's passing. Conroy was the voice of the Caped Crusader, beginning with Batman the Animated Series. He continued with the role through nearly 60 different series, animated movies, and video games over the years. Conroy also appeared in several TV series throughout the 1980s, including Cheers, Murphy Brown, and Matlock. Kevin Conroy was 66 years old. Early exit polls show young people, especially Gen Zers, helped secure key races for Democrats this midterm election. Coming up, it comes as the midterms had the second highest young voter turnout of the last 30 years. And sharing stories and remembering those who served. An annual 24-hour vigil honors veterans and their families. That's coming up on a special Veterans Day edition of Eyewitness News at 6. And technically, today will go down as a nearly normal temperature day-wise, but we spent most of the afternoon in the 30s. And we have some snow chances to talk about. I'll have the details on all that coming up in your most trusted forecast a little later. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team with Eric Wilson, Mimi Murphy, Scott Lepper, and meteorologist Jordan Wolf. Democrats are thanking young voters for helping prevent a red wave this election cycle. According to exit polls, voters ages 18 to 29 showed up in potentially record numbers, especially in battleground races. More than 60% of that voting bloc supported Democrats on the ballot. Raquel Martin takes a deeper dive into those numbers. You voted in historic numbers again. Young voters are getting a special shout out from the president this election cycle. Young people voted to continue addressing the climate crisis, gun violence, personal rights and freedom. Although votes are still being tallied, exit polling from the Center for Information and Research on Civic Learning and Engagement shows voters 18 through 29 were key to securing Democratic victories in battleground states. We kind of knew that that was going to be the case. Tom Bergen works with Headcount, a nonpartisan group that registers young voters. He says it's no surprise young voters, especially Gen Z, are turning out. Gen Z, by nature of just existing, is political, and the result of that is the turnout for elections that we are seeing and that we probably will continue to see because only about half of Gen Z is eligible to vote thus far. At 25, Florida Democrat Maxwell Alejandro Frost is now the first member of Gen Z elected to Congress. He says the GOP ought to take note. Over 65, 64 percent of Gen Z voted for Democrats. It would be a wake-up call for me, but I'm not sure they're going to wake up. Daniel Alvarez with the Republican National Committee says it's too soon to draw conclusions. We have 14 House races that have yet to be called and two Senate races. She says the RNC is instead focusing on the Senate runoff in Georgia. In Washington, we're Cal Martin. President Biden gave a speech at the UN's International Climate Summit in Egypt. The president pledged to continue his efforts to address climate change. He highlighted his administration's successes and said the U.S. is on track to meet its Paris Agreement goal of reducing emissions by 2030. But he acknowledged it will take a combined global effort and urged world leaders to double down their efforts. We're racing forward to do our part to avert the climate hell that the U.N. Secretary General so passionately warned about earlier this week. We can no longer plead ignorance to the consequences of our actions or continue to repeat our mistakes. 
Everyone has to keep accelerating efforts throughout this decisive decade. The president will now head to Cambodia and then to Indonesia for the annual G20 summit of the world's biggest economies. The record high temperatures from yesterday are long gone. Today, we're 40 degrees colder than we were yesterday. When we come back, Jordan shows us the weather next week looks more like December or January. Now, your first worn weather forecast from meteorologist Jordan Wolf. Well, if you've been outside at all today, it does not take a meteorologist to tell you that it is much colder than where we were just yesterday. This strong push of cold air in evident here as we continue to see many locations across the upper plains in the 20s. Des Moines, Iowa did not get out of the 20s throughout the entire day today. Here in Rockford and the locally areas, we got up into the 30s in a couple of spots, but that's kind of where we have remained through most of the afternoon. Temperatures right now are still almost 40 degrees cooler than we were just 24 hours ago because that was before that cold front came through. We hit record warm highs yesterday, and today we're still sitting in the 30s and feels much more like December than it does November. We're still seeing those temperatures near freezing. Quite a few locations now at the freezing mark here in Rockford. Wind chill making it feel like 21 degrees. 29 degrees feels like 17 out in Galena. So definitely a stronger push of that cold air because of that northwest wind making it feel even colder than that as well. Some remnants of Nicole are continuing to move off the east coast. Here locally, we got a lot of those clear skies working in. And then we get a little bit more of that cloud cover now that we're seeing behind that. That's where we're going to see Increased chance for some flurries throughout the overnight tonight and throughout much of the day tomorrow. We continue to see that increase in cloud cover now as the sun is setting. Downtown Rockford SkyTrack camera up on the Supply Corps building is brought to us by Window World. Throughout the rest of the night tonight, clouds continue to increase, and that brings the chances for some snow flurries into the area. Temperatures do not fall very far from where they are currently. We're in the low 30s right now. Only a couple more degrees to fall before the overnight low, right around 29 degrees. Winds remaining still a factor there out of the west northwest. That'll bring wind chill factors into play once again throughout the overnight tonight and through throughout the day tomorrow as well. Tomorrow afternoon we get a little bit of peaks of sunshine working in, but not a whole lot as we continue to see those snow flurries remaining the case. Falling there as we continue to see temperatures also reaching back up into the 30s. Not much warmer than we were for most of the afternoon today though, so definitely a chilly picture in store for the rest of the next couple of days. Clouds continue to increase overnight tonight and the chances for flurries work their way in after midnight. Mostly though coming in for the early part of the day tomorrow. That's where we see the higher chances were working in afternoon throughout the evening hours as well. Some of those could develop into snow showers where it's a little bit higher probability of snow to fall and not just falling in bursts like flurries do, but not really talking about a whole lot of snows. They continue to see those working their way out, very scattered in nature, working in for the afternoon and the evening hours. We get clear skies behind that as temperatures fall throughout the overnight hours into the early part of Sunday, and we get a little bit of increase in cloud cover back into the day on Sunday. Our next chance for snow showers comes in once again for the middle of the week. That's where we see the next system working its way in. We don't know a whole lot just yet, but we do know that there could be some frozen precipitation working in for Tuesday and into Wednesday. If it falls all as snow, likely will be some accumulating snow in some areas. Not a whole lot, but definitely something we still have to keep an eye on over these next couple of days. Temperatures continuing to fall, though, as our average temperature around this time of year is back down into the 40s. Over the last week, we were still seeing temperatures in the 50s, 60s, and even 70s, including setting a record just yesterday. Compare that to these next few days early this week. We're going to be seeing temperatures much closer to where we should be by the time we get into December and even late November. A much cooler trend for these next few days. And that remains the case over the next 6 to 10 days. Climate outlook favoring below normal temperatures throughout much of the rest of the middle of the month and into next month as well. We continue to see those temperatures cooling over the next few days. Still 35 degrees for tomorrow, 36 on Sunday, a little bit more sunshine. Our next chance for rain for the middle of the week still cool all the way into next weekend. Seeing that a whole seven day without any 50s or 60s on it, that's kind of rough. All right, Jordan, thanks. <laughs> Scott's in next with sports. Two local volleyball teams kept alive their dream of winning state championships this weekend. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. There is one day left in the girls' high school volleyball season, and there's still a very good chance our area could have two state champions. Freeport Aquin and Genoa Kingston both won their semifinal matches today in normal. 
Aquin took the court at Redbird Arena for a 1A semifinal game against Sterling Newman. And the dogs went right away to their big hitter, Lucy R2, delivers as usual. She had seven kills. Bentley Stovall gets up and she pounds the point. Bentley Stovall again now, this time on the serve, and that's in there for the ace. All dogs so far. Megan Holder next gets one of her 17 assists on this set to Arndt. Hannah Pizzolato next will serve for the match. And this one's not coming back. Aquin made this match look easy at times, winning 25, 13, 25, 16. The Lady Dogs are now trying to become top dogs in the entire state tomorrow morning when they take on Springfield Lutheran in the championship game. You know, we've had this goal all year, so it's been really amazing that we've been pushing towards that goal. You know, we really haven't had many nerves because we're just confident in ourselves. We were very clean, you know, we just played our Bulldog Volleyball, and we're going to do that tomorrow, and that's all we could do, so hopefully we turn out with a win. They just need to go out and play their game. They've been showing up every every match that we've played, they've been showing up. Um, their mental strength is so strong, and they come out and they play their game, play Bulldog Volleyball, and uh, we're going to have a great day tomorrow. Genoa Kingston was battling in a 2A semifinal match against Illinois Valley Central. A great turnout by the GK fans and students. GK in the near court. Olivia Keegan with a perfect back set for senior Lily Mueller, who hammers it in for the point. Keegan another set, this time for Elena Pierce, since she gets one of her eight kills. Mueller will get another one of her ten kills right there. How about a big dig? Hannah Langton gets it right there. And now it is match point. And Mueller's kill does it. GK will play for a state championship tomorrow. The Cogs won this match in straight sets, 25-23, 25-15. I just think we need to just, like, remember where we came from. Just, like, play as hard as we can and just play our hearts out because it'll be our last game. It's exciting. I mean, I, it doesn't even feel real. We, like, always thought at the beginning of the season this was one of our goals this was to come down state and now that we are headed into the state championship it feels amazing so tomorrow looks like this at 10:30, Aquin will play Springfield Lutheran for the 1A championship and at 155 Genoa Kingston will play IC Catholic for the 2A championship Reagan Holgate will have those matches covered at sports we'll be right back The cool trend continues over the next couple of days and starting with initially clear skies on the first one interactive radar from Rockford Auto Glass and more, but some snow showers and some snow flurries working their way in for the overnight tonight and throughout much of the day tomorrow. Temperatures remaining cool throughout the rest of the weekend down into the 30s. We get some sunshine coming in for Sunday, but clouds work their way back in. Our next system for the middle of the week could bring us some wintry precipitation again. We stay cool all the way through to next weekend. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.